We asked Professor Michioshi Ai of Tsukuba University to analyze the throw from that perspective. He's going to do it using 3D motion capture. Markers are attached to the subject's main joints. The movements will be recorded, allowing for the data to be displayed. Two athletes took part in the experiment. One weighs roughly 48 kilograms, the same as Yamagishi. The other is roughly 100 kilograms, about the same as Nicholas. These spots indicate the center of gravity. Let's look at how it shifts during the Kuzushi, Tsukuri, and Kake phases. Now, here's the point when the attacker has caught the recipient. In order to remain standing in position, the vertical projection from the center of gravity needs to fall in the center of the base of support. The base of support is the area within the outline of the ground contact points of both feet. Now, as you can see here, pulling back draws the opponent's center of gravity beyond the base of support. That's how it begins. That's the Kuzushi phase. The smaller athlete then places her body under that center of gravity as she moves in quite low and deep. There's a very good reason for getting below the opponent's center of gravity. Imagine the recipient of the throw is this stick. The red circle indicates the center of gravity. Suppose we try to turn the stick to produce a torque of 10 kilogram meter. We'd have to apply a force of around 50 kilograms to push the stick at a point two tenths of a meter below the center of gravity. But if we push the stick at four tenths of a meter below the center of gravity, we'd only need half the force. In other words, applying force far away from the center of gravity produces much torque with minimal force. What that means for judo is that by applying force at a point far below the opponent's center of gravity, a small judoka can throw a much larger person. So once in position, the attacker simply has to stretch her knees to flip the bigger person over. Softness overcoming hardness has a scientific basis.